All right, all right. So what we're gonna do here is get through the rest of class notes. Um, I know we started these in class. We all got through part one together. So I think we'll start with part two. I think some of our classes got into part two a little bit, um, but we'll uh, we'll just start with part two. If, if your class got through part two or part of part two, you can fast forward until you get to where we left off. Um, okay, so I gave you a graph in class that looked like this. This is, uh, oops, there we go. And this is just a collection of of snowfall totals in Bend, Oregon over the past 100 years or so. So you got starts at 1927 over there and uh, looks like it goes all the way up to 2023 on the right side. Um, and what you're looking at, it's just a very convenient way of, of, of sketching out data like this. It, it starts uh, left to right on the horizontal, keeps track of the years, and then down to up on the vertical keeps track of the total inches of snowfall. So that's all. That's all you're looking at is it's a convenient way of expressing two different pieces of information. A time, that's why it's called a time series. And in this case, snowfall over that time. You can you can look for trends, although I'm not sure there's much of a trend here, but you can look for trends in the system this way. Okay, so let's go through these. Uh, find the rightmost point on the graph. All right, let's do that. Oh, that's 2023. Okay, so that's that's just last winter. Uh, just ended in you know, March or April of last winter. Uh, looks like the, the horizontal component is 2023. The vertical component is 61 or 62 inches, it looks like. So what that tells us is in 2023, the winter that ended in 2023, we got about 62 inches of snow, just over maybe five feet of snow. Nice. Uh, how many years are represented in the graph? Okay, well, let's see. We, we start in 1927, and we go all the way to 2023. So let's do 2023 minus 1927. That's, okay, if I subtract those two numbers, I get 96. But technically, there's going to be 97, because if you subtract them, that just tells you how much bigger this one is than the other one. So 96, if you say 96 or 97, it's going to be close enough. It's about a century's worth of data. Technically, it's 97 years. It actually looks like 96, but it's 97. It's just about a century. Why do you think not every year is printed? Oh, okay, so if you look again, oh yeah, okay, so see how I'm skipping over years? Like I skip all the even numbered years. It goes from 27 to 29, 29 to 31, and so forth and so on. Um, there's a reason for that. I'm gonna share it with you here. I'm gonna show you the original data set, which I keep in Excel. Um, I've had to keep track of this data for a few years now, ever since I moved here, actually, because the original folks, the Western uh, Regional Climate Center, stopped collecting data uh, in their station that they were using, so I picked it up. Um, here is what it looks like if you have every year on that axis. It looks like that. And to me, that was a headache. I thought that was just too busy. I mean, it's just too many years. It gets too cluttered. It, it, I don't know, all, my eyes almost cross a little bit when I see that. Um, so I goofed around with it over the years when I printed these graphs off. I, I One year I did every third year. So 1927, 30, 33, 36, and so forth and so on. Uh, but students didn't like that. And they, they didn't like it because they said things like, well, look, but now it's, it's a little hard to see what's going on because like, what is that point right there? Like that point, like if you come down and you're in your, in your mouse or your eyes wander, you might think that's 1928, but it's actually 1929. So I got around that by going every second year. And you know, the thing about these graphs is you, you can mess around with them in many, many different ways. I just decided so far, I think that is the simplest. You, you get enough accuracy in the numbers but it's not so cluttered. So that's that's my kind of long-winded answer for, for why I did that. I'm curious what you would think. Uh, least and greatest amount of bend uh, snowfall. Okay, so let's do least and greatest. So least. Okay, it's this one right here. Looks like it's about maybe an inch or two. And it looks like it happened in 1940. Okay, good. Um, and greatest... Looks like it's this one here, and it looks like that one. Oh, 1973! That's my birth year. <laughs> so that one, that, what is that, about 91 or 92 inches. Pretty cool. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I started working at COCC in 2004. Yes, thank good. <laughs> thank good. 
know why. I don't know what I even said just there. I started working at COCC in 2004. Let's go look at the graph. Thank God. Was I saying thank God? I don't know. 2004. So 03, 05, 04. Oh, it was a lame winter. Look at that, y'all. About a foot of snow in 04. Ugh, that's terrible. That's terrible. I don't remember that because, well, A, because I'm old and B, because we've been here a while. Um, but there you go. That's how you can pull information off of a time series line chart. Okay, let's keep going. Um, and it's always, this is always fun, actually. People, especially people that are in town uh, visiting or they just moved to town. Like, how much snow do we usually get? Well, you know, it's a loaded question. You can answer it a bazillion different ways. So one way I decided to check was I just, let's just look. And I found a bendoregon.gov website. Um, Bend is a high elevation mountain town that often sees more than 20 or 30 inches of snow in a winter. Okay. What does often mean? Okay, so think about that. If you say something happens often, what does that mean to you? What does it mean often? And this is, I wish I was in class with you asking this question because it's, it's, it probably means different things to different people. <sighs> One way to look at it is it, it, whatever you're looking at happens more frequently than it does it. So maybe one way of looking at often is it happens more than half the time. So that's, that's a definition of what often means. It happens more often or more frequently than it doesn't. So, so let's take a look, the majority. What percent of Ben Winters saw more than 30 inches of snow? Okay, well, 30 inches of snow. Let's get in here, 30 inches. Uh, so 30 is this third line, one, two, three. Okay, well, let's count how many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I'm not going to count that one. That's sitting right on 30. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. I count 43 years. So if I pull a window over here and I do 43 divided by the 97 years there are, I get 44% of years get more than 30 inches of snow. So by my definition of often, that's not often. <laughs> I said the majority, more than 50%. So by my definition, 30 inches of snow does not happen often. It happens a lot but not often. What if we do more, what if we do 20? Okay, let's look at 20. All right, so 20 would have, 20 would include all the years I just counted, but also the ones between 20 and 30. So I'm just gonna count those now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna count that one now. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's 20 more. Oh, this is going to be often now, because if I add 20 to my 43, that's going to be 63. And that, my dear friends, is about 65% of the time. Yeah, that is definitely often. That's like two-thirds of the time. So in Bend, two-thirds of the time, you see 20 inches or more snow. That is definitely often. All right, all right, all right. Um, okay, this video is eight and a half minutes long. That is long enough. Uh, I think I'm going to stop this one and we'll start the next one um, with the next questions.